Hey, hey, hi. What's up, guys? Hey, everybody. Hi. Oh. Howdy. Oh. Ah. Who is oh that God. with us? Oh. We have a Whoa. ghosts. <laughs> uh, hi, we're Volition. We uh, are. I'm Josh Stinson, the stream czar. Uh, the other people from Volition we have with us today are... Alexander Mejia, video producer. And Ryan McCabe, senior designer. Uh, but on top of that, we have three more people over Skype from Double Fine. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Ghosts. We're the ghosts. We are ghosts. ghosts. Scary ghosts. Tim, I'm Tim. First. Hello. Tim Schaefer. <laughs> uh, I'm Tim. Yeah? It says it on yeah. your t-shirt. It says it on my shirt. Thank yeah. you. I'm Spaff. Hello. Howdy, I'm Michael. Hello. He has a cool tie. I have a tie today. He's yeah. nice that you dress like Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I was, that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> little pen and everything mm -hmm. in this shirt. Yeah. Oh, they cool. can't see that. I don't think they can see that. Can they uh, see us? I don't think we're Not yet. Not, not yet. We'll we'll be bring you up soon, though. That's yeah. okay. You can take my word for it. I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> I, I, you can believe him. I can see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Josh, ask me what we're playing. Ask okay. me what we're playing. Alex Mejia, Alexander Mejia, what are we playing? We are playing Day of the Tentacle! Yeah! Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna bring the stream down real quick right now, all right? <laughs> Wait, what? What? But I've never played Day of the Tentacle. I'm so sorry. No, this is all right, a great we're time. done. This, no, this is, no, 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 no. Uh, this is, this is uh, quite uh, possibly the best time to jump right on this one. Okay. No, oh, I envy you. I really wish I could be playing it for the first time. That's I true. mean, <laughs> so lucky. You're so lucky. Whoa, look at that Day of the Tentacle uh, rip-off t-shirt, though. Are you wearing a bootleg? Right? It, it, yeah. it is uh, a bootleg. I <laughs> uh, sell rugs like that on our store. Mm -hmm. I love that rug like that. It's just, just turn, like colors, too. We should just turn Lola into that room. Yeah. Yeah. We're Make good. this room that room. We're good now. <laughs> we, we, that yeah. is yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. So, um, <laughs> should we start the game and you guys give us a little bit of like live commentary of some of the cool stuff that happens in the intro? Yeah, if you, yeah, if you'd like to, or you could ask us questions also. You could just know. play the game with commentary and we'll move our yeah. mouths. <laughs> 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 no, but this I'm is... Think of what we could say that wasn't in the commentary, like the uncut stuff. Yeah, yeah. the uncut stuff, there it's, we go. The oh my god. Version. It's the same thing, but just the bad words won't be censored. Yeah, we'll say yeah, a lot right. of bad bombs uh -huh. right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Because you guys make M-rated games. Yeah, we, we, we do. can do whatever we want, man. It's cool. We do what we yeah. want. body poo poo. For you people that didn't hear before, <laughs> yeah. Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Internet, but yeah. kids use this. Bam. Okay. Feel I'm good. sorry, I messed up. Josh has never played this, people. I messed up. Look, I played most of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better, uh, better get ready. I would recommend either blow. new game or, yeah, I would go with new game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, start of the game. We're good. It's okay. It's my save data of being five minutes into the Why game. Why do we? Yeah, let's, let's no, we don't need to enable developer commentary. We got know. the developers behind our backs. Right. <laughs> Are you gonna start from a save game inside the in deeper in the game? Uh, we were just gonna start to show the intro because. Yeah. I don't know. This is to me like yeah. when I watched this the first time as a kid, I was just like, "Holy shit!" There's like a cartoon happening inside my computer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very first CD-ROM game I ever owned. I think it came with my uh, Creative Labs like CD-ROM uh, package thing. Yeah. It, it came bundled. With, yeah, it was bundled with it. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> So right here, we'll, we'll see the first bit of bonus content. Bonus that, content is that tree on the right. On the very right. <laughs> yeah. We are covering it up with our... <laughs> yeah, covering it up with our live stream. Yeah. But, uh, the picture in picture is covering it. Because the uh, aspect ratio was standard before, and we made it all HD, and so... But these guys found the original concept art, so we could actually know what the artist meant to be over there, and so we added a few bonus pixels. Mm -hmm. Man, Free. That's like all the hard work. With the press of the edition. <laughs> Like I could. So there's purple and green tentacle. Mm -hmm. Which one's which? Uh, it never really makes that clear. Yeah. 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 Purple like is the one with the green suckers, and okay. yellow, green is the one with the yellow suckers. That's how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I see. Like stalactites and stalagmites. This is the first nutso animation ever. This is Larry Ahern, our uh, lead animator. He, he did, he, last thing he had done was all the Monkey Island 2, like the scene where the Chuck is the voodoo doll and all that crazy stuff. The, yellow outlines around them, so he was mm -hmm. getting all wrapped up for this amazing tentacle but mutation scene. <laughs> so I want to remind you guys that if you're watching the stream that you're going to be probably about 14 seconds behind. Oh, yeah. I'm Precisely 14. Oh, wait, are you at the end of the game already? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I use cheat codes. Are you speedrunning? 
Uh, I don't know if we're speed running, but uh, we have speed run games before the past. Ryan, can you speed run Day of the Tentacle? I don't, I don't think we can speed run at the time we have, and I think people need to just enjoy in like the amazingness. Yeah. yeah, I think 18 minutes is the record. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed the jokes. Yeah, you know, exactly. What's the point of playing it that way? What are in those jars up there, Tim? Is that something of Laverne's? Uh, that's Laverne's a medical student, so yeah. the gross things are from her uh, from her lab. How old? Oh, section. How old are they? I never was clear on they're, that. I think they're college students. That's why they live in that apartment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think they're high school students. Or maybe they're college children. Yeah, and they have mentioned college students because they have that flyer from the, the college. Isn't there some weird uh, secret thing about Bernard being um, a millionaire? After the after the, the <laughs> minute mention. Yeah, I think at the end of minute he sold the rights to um, the story. <laughs> now he's a secret billionaire. Oh, that's right. That happens in the game. The Felicia <laughs> guys are super quiet. I think they just muted us a long time ago. And yeah. <laughs> no, we're we're still here. I actually have one question for you after yes. playing this. Like, I actually never played um, the original. Before you said I that like a hundred times. Yeah. Come on, I get it. No, 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 no. It's not that. I'm just wondering, like, how do you make the jump from that game to this game? Because it's so wildly different, and yet it's like it's so good, and it's supposed to be a sequel. I mean, like, what? Uh, what did that even start? Maniac Mansion to this game? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we Maniac Mansion had been made and shipped before we, Dave and I, uh, Dave Grossman, the project bigger, and I came to LucasArts. So. Um, it was already in the can. We helped like for like a couple days on the uh, um, Nintendo version, just shoving objects around. But um, so by the time 1990, you know, 19, I think we started this in 92. By the time it was 92, it had been. It came out. The original came out in 86, thing. and so um, it was. It was more like we were starting from scratch, and we had definitely played the. You said that's older than I am. Original. This one's older than Aaron Jacobs, though. Yeah. Who was one yeah, of our programmers yes. on it. So. Yeah. You get it. You guys are young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, it, we, you know, Dave and I played, you know, the first game, and we were working with Ron Gilbert, who made the first game, and we just talked about what were our favorite parts of it, and what we would like to keep and explore in the, in the new game. And then it just ended up looking really different because it had different artists on it instead of Gary Winnick. Okay, um, we'll who's working with Ron on Thimbleweed Park. It's, uh, it was uh, Peter Chan and Larry Ahern, and they, along with us, just love Chuck Jones cartoons and uh, Bugs Bunny and all, and Daffy Duck and Duck and Muck and all those things. And so it just took on a life of its own as, a, as an animated cartoon. We've got to find and then in the uh, in the doc, Peter also mentions a little bit, like just looking at what Monkey did uh, to his artwork for the backgrounds when they pixelated. You make it sound like a monkey, like one rep. Like, really got monkey <laughs> came in. <laughs> uh, but he wanted, he really loved like like making something that would read well when they pixelated it. So we tried to do that older stuff and borrowed a lot from learning snowball. The whole time we were working on this, I thought that was a Frank Fisher raw Reagan. <laughs> and the Rick Master, Peter's like, no, it's not. It's just the employee of the week. <laughs> really? You really know, learn something every day. You well, know, it's funny though that you mentioned that about the art style because, like, it's so bold and and because you worked around those limitations of, I'm guessing what, like, 320 by 200 graphics, that like it, it actually became something unique and it's its own thing. And now that you've like HDified it, like, it feels really. Um, really unique in its own way. Like, there's not a game with this type of art style. Mm, yeah, I think, um, you know, Peter is really uh, a firm believer in keeping it simple. And I think when we did the remaster, I think some of the earlier tests had it a lot more detail. They're like, well, we got to make this look. You know, when everyone, so when someone makes an HD version of one of the old LucasArts games, you'll see someone will do Monkey in an Unreal Engine or something. They always <laughs> add a lot of detail. They can look really, you know, high fidelity. And Peter was a big believer in just keeping the, um, the swaths of color like big and bold and simple and just making everything just look smoother and nicer as if it was the original um, marker or paint version of it. So it, it actually, I mean, I think it takes a lot of discipline on the artist to like um, resist the urge to detail everything up and just keep everything looking as if, you know, Warner Brothers had made it, you know, back when they were making cartoons like that. Yeah, I mean, this looks very close to uh, Peter's original pen yeah. uh, drawing, yeah. which you'll see in the concept art gallery as you start collecting. Yeah. And what's, what's, right. what's funny mm -hmm. about it, too, is um, you can actually go back to the original version of it. So I'm going to hit a button on the controller oh, here. Yeah, if you press F1, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah F1. And it's, it's crazy, like, how close it is to the original. Yeah. And it maintains yeah. all that, all that, um, 
that feeling of it, but still it's just like, okay, well it's the same thing but HD and it's like I think this is the best way to do an upscale or do an HD version of anything without like pissing off all the fans and be like, that's not my version of the game. It's I not what I remember it. playing. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad you like it because it's controversial. Some people are like, oh, they should have added more creases to everything. Mm. No, 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 screw that. <laughs> Normal maps, more shininess, yeah. more gradients, but no, I think it's a bad idea. No, if you guys wanted to do this in a real form, I mean, then like, <laughs> it, it would be something different, right? This version was to make it look like you remember it. So to, to make everything high fidelity. Well, not that one guy who didn't play it. Oh, yeah. It's well, true. We don't want to make it like he remembered it. No. <laughs> It wouldn't but, exist. Yeah, that was, the, that was the goal, to be true to the original, keep it authentic, um, and just kind of make it look like you were saying Peter Chan wanted, which is as if they made it today. I don't know. I feel like if you guys were to make this game today, there would be a lot of choices made different, just because, like, I'm playing the puzzles in this, and I'm just remembering, like, all oh, these puzzles are so, so good, and they're, they're complicated, and they're deep, and I feel like you can't do that very often with the game anymore. When you said choices, I thought you were going to say a modern version of this would have moral choices in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a morality system for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's some cover right there with that desk. <laughs> no. It's about waist high. Well, yep. And all its morals alike. I mean, he does say to get ahead in life, you have to push a few old ladies down the stairs at some point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just, yeah. he's a pragmatist. Yeah. 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 He, didn't, he, didn't he didn't delight pushing that old lady down the stairs. Imagine if you had to make yeah, the had, choice. Had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That so, was one of my favorite um, little bits of detail that had to be added when it says no. And in the old game, it just said no and squiggle, squiggle, but now it says no running with scissors, which I think is a really good <laughs> <No>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it says. It did at some point anyway, and I hope it's still there. Because <laughs> we had to add in detail, it used to just be illegible, you know, pixels. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, this game was obviously the inspiration for uh, Saints Row, correct? Yeah, pretty, I mean, <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. That's what I've been told. So, you guys, as we're playing, just point out the <laughs> the things that were lifted uh, for Saints Row from this game. Like, <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. well, hey, I mean, I'm, I'll switch to it right now. I mean, we do have a Day of the Tentacle Easter egg in Saints Row 4. We I'll do. Really? We do. Yeah. Did you guys know about that? Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't the, uh, show it all. <laughs> yeah. It's the, uh, the, the purple tentacle bat. Uh. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I misinterpreted that completely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty amazing. There's also a blue tentacle, though. Oh, is the blue He's one? He's canon, blue mm -hmm. tentacle. No, there is blue tentacle. There's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it mentioned. Yeah. 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 There's something funny yeah. about that. But he has that. a name. That has a few more, more suckers than the one I'm used to, but... Uh, <laughs> It seems to get the job done. <laughs> That's quite that is quite an honor, you guys, really. <laughs> well, you know, we can only stand on the shoulders of giants, you know, and only be as hot as tall as they were standing, so I didn't know that was a feature of Saints Row that they had giants. We <laughs> stand on the suckers of giants. Stand on the suckers of suckers. <laughs> That's gonna be taken out of context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That never happens. Yeah. Uh, our chat's actually going crazy right now for full throttle already, and it's like, gosh, they just got this game, like, yesterday. We just finished this, you guys play yeah. it. You can only ask full throttle if you finished and uh, gotten all the achievements. Yeah, platform. Platform. You, need, you need to have, like, a little code at the end. Yeah, like, if they watch the credits all the way to the end, it's like, call 1-800-STAR-WARS and say, I don't know, Purple's got your back or something. Call that I think you still get Lucasfilm if you call that number. Okay. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Should I, should I call 1-800-STAR-WARS right now? <laughs> I think I'm gonna call him right now. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Yeah, call on speakerphone. Do it. it might be a porn line. If it's a porn line, it's still great. They <laughs> well, like, they... printed the porn number in one of the manuals no. one year. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, in one of the games they printed the, um, uh, maybe not so still, sorry. They, they, um, <laughs> it's, well, it's not. It's not, they, they yeah. printed the number for the, the helpline and it was like one digit off and it was that's actually a porn. Like a, that's like a 900 number. Oh, man. That's like a thing that happens a lot. Because I remember, I think Last of Us had a, the exact same issue with one of their 
textures having a number that was also a point. Oh wow. Accident. Accidentally. <laughs> Yeah. I think that might have been a nod to us, though. Yeah, exactly. That was a uh, homage to that thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a symbol for bunny. All right, guys, the phone's ringing. Hold on, we're calling <laughs> Boy Hunter Star Wars right now. Don't have to get on all this. You're scratched. You're scratched. You're scratched. You're scratched. Nobody's there. Yeah, nobody, nobody's at 1-800-Star-Wars. How yeah, can you ship a game that, that has a phone what? number that you can call? Yeah. Oh man, you guys already need a hint too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost done with the opening cutscene of the game. That's how long the opening cutscene is. Yeah, it is really long. But it's it so longer. but it's so good though, because you're playing and it doesn't feel like one big opening cutscene. Exactly. You know? It's interspersed a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's almost over. Oh, there's this part. You definitely get to that. click something in the middle. Yeah. 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 If this was made today though, that would just be a series of quick time events to get you engaged while it tells you the story. <laughs> Or we'll be driving around a people mover, just watching the scene from like a track. Are calling on duty yeah. now, zero eight six T. Oh, Apparently, maybe, too many people yeah, are calling. Yeah, too many people are calling. Yeah, Wars. they're calling one eight hundred Star Wars too much right now. Is that the time lady? <laughs> <laughs> You guys still have that? Like in this in this in this era, I've been talking about so much. On my cell phone, let me call the time. That's what we have in England. What? Really? Yeah. On the third stroke, the time sponsored by Accurist will be 10.49, precisely. Should have been the Queen. How long would it take for the Queen to just report all? <laughs> uh, probably not very long. She's probably yeah. looking for stuff to do. Yeah. yeah. Everybody trusts her. Oh, they're telling me it's 1-900 Star Wars. Oh, no. No, it said 1-800. Oh, a dollar a minute. Yeah, it said 1-800 Star Wars in the... In the in the game, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just full of spoilers. Yeah, it pretty much tells the whole story of the game for Bang It's called it. foreshadowing. But <laughs> <laughs> in the narrative, it's foreshadowing. You know? Wait, is there time yeah. travel in this? Uh-oh. Is there who? Time travel. Oh, you're looking at it, baby. Whoa. Yeah, yeah look at that. Jane. And those outhouses. Think about it. The thing that grossed me out is if those outhouses have ever been used, think about how much would splatter if they really fell from the sky like they do. Yeah. Yeah. They're traveling. Yep. It was one thing to go up. Okay, right now he's coated in feces. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's flying up on the inside. They might be, you know, brand new. Yeah, unused. Yeah, sh should have done it in Unreal 4. You could have had a realistic feces shader, man. <laughs> Boom, and then the inside he'd be like a milkshake or a shake yeah. of egg chicken. Uh, Cool. Okay, be coded in feces. So therefore, they're <laughs> no. empty. No. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah that, that means this just proves that they're empty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Laverne. Laverne. <laughs> what kind of puzzle would you design around the feces, though? Are they alive? Well, um, obviously identifying <laughs> or possibly uh, probably making a bomb. I think it would be like a methane-based bomb. Oh, yeah? yeah? That's it's, scientific. Yeah, that's scientific. Yeah, or you have to light it to... I mean, it's very explosive. You put it in a bag, you set the bag on fire as a yeah, distraction. Exactly. Yeah. No. I, I think the question is more like, what adventure game puzzle could you not solve with these? Yeah. <laughs> Hoagie going to I hope you're paying attention to this plot here. It's basically important. Yeah, let me explain. They travel to time. But <laughs> one of the I feel like one, sure. one of my favorite jokes from this game is is coming up. I think it's this part right here where Dr. Fred goes up the stairs, but then he's already back and then he just walks back in again. Yeah, yeah. Or like he teleports somewhere else, and Bernard just goes, "How do you get over there?" Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. It's gonna be an animation walking downstairs. Is that right? That's one of my favorite gags in the game. I'm sure that was on purpose. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't just a. We forgot where we left him. Why is there a stoplight above that bug? How are you guys enjoying the game so far? It's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. I I mean, so, so when I first started playing this, like, like I said, the graphics are right, the sound was right. Like, the only. And maybe uh, this is just me being really being really yeah. weird about it, but the only disappointment I have is that like the original like crappy sounds aren't there when you flip back to the old I don't mode. Want to cause any more trouble? Yeah, explain that, Tucker. Why is that? Uh, probably <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt's yeah, fault. It's Matt's, Matt's, Matt's fault. Yeah. I don't there, there was storage issues with that. Also, they were really bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's one of the things nostalgia does not necessarily. I play. Uh, it was one of the last games where we didn't really. That was the last game that I think we just grabbed sound effects off a CD library to make, <laughs> and you can kind of tell. Because yeah. after that, like Full Throttle has these amazing sounds that Clip Bajikian made by hand out of 
bees in a jar and a tank and a donkey and a jet. Like, those are seriously how you made the motorcycle sounds. And, but this one, it was just like, where's that CD with all the sounds on it? Where's the wacky 90s sound? Yeah, the wacky 90s sound? It, 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 it sounded like a, like, like a Warner Brothers sound demo disc, you know what I mean? Like, or like yeah. a Hanna-Barbera sound thing. I've, I've heard some of those, like, all recorded from, like, the 60s and 70s where they're not exactly CD quality, but, you know, they're there for classic sake. Fifteen years from now, we'll do the re demaster and then they'll, they'll be back. <laughs> the re, the re, 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 re. Pull our video guy tracked down a lot of those sounds, but then couldn't find some. Uh, some of our uh, community have found some of the other sounds, but they're inside libraries that cost like five hundred bucks. You know, just be five hundred bucks for that one sound effect. So it just quickly would add up. Like we're just going to try and find a couple of sound effects that we're missing. So he just recreated a couple of things. There's not too many things that are recreated. Quite a lot of it has been recovered. Yeah. And all the we voice acting. A lot of the wacky sound effects. <laughs> all the voice acting was like recut from tapes you had, wasn't it, for this version? To make yeah, because it, it was all heavily compressed, even just to fit on. That's your favorite really show? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was all really compressed because uh, even for CD-ROM, like we had to compress it down from 44 to fit on um, on the disc, and then we made a floppy version that compressed it all the way down really far. And so Dr. Fred especially had all these, I think it's called sibilance in his voice, his yeah, yeah, yeah. hissing sounds. And so yeah, Paul O'Rourke had to go back and re-edit all the voice from the original DAT tapes. Uh, Handcrafted each line yeah. of dialogue a yeah. again. <laughs> like going through each take, trying to work out which take it was that was in the final game. Because yeah, the actors yeah. like do out. each line like three Let's times sometimes or four. Yep. And, uh, he, he, and he, we have all these old notes that showed which take the director wanted, and so he recut oh, them. Oh, great. Yeah. You can, uh, if you watch the doc that two player posted on our YouTube channel, you'll see yeah. Paul talk about that for a couple minutes. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen some of that even firsthand. Like we recorded our voice actors doing voice for Saints Row. We've actually got a small documentary up of, of that for uh, Get Out of Hell. Yeah, and part of Saints Row Four as well, if I remember right. But um, yeah, sometimes there's we call them Franken takes inside the booth where it's like that's exactly what we call it too. yeah take take one and take four and a little bit of mm, and you know band-aids in the middle and like there you go that's the take and i, can, I can't imagine having to redo all that work did you do this also for anyone who has to go back and remaster brutal legend someday and has to recut ozzy osbourne's voice <laughs> this word from this take and this word from that take and this word <laughs> what are the words i can't tell <laughs> Yeah. Well, he was so how far ahead are you guys now? Oh, you're, you're out of the cutscene. Almost. Almost. Yes. Time for me to say close, I guess. And we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Thanks for being on stream. Bye. Yeah. So, what'd you guys have for lunch today? <laughs> hoagies? Did you eat hoagies? Come on. Get with a the theme. <laughs> I like that they call it ye oldie outhouse because back then it would probably be like ye new outhouse yeah, yeah like yeah. the new outhouse maybe there's another new outhouse on the other side <laughs> yeah you know the, the ye oldie the y character when you see that sign is actually just a, one of those combination characters meaning th so every time you see that it just says the old and like no this is the, fun yeah it's like ye is way Debbie Downer English facts well yeah there you go <laughs> people just got it you're saying you're saying that when you say ye oldie we're not being you're just, just saying it wrong <laughs> <laughs> next you're gonna say we shouldn't say oldie yeah you guys we have a lot of concept art so you know I know concept art I, I actually looked at a lot of the concept art in this and um, I did watch the Double Fine docu or sorry the, the two player production documentary before uh, I played this and I was just like, oh shoot, there's like all this stuff sitting in Lucasfilm. Yeah, well, you know, I guess Disney, Lucas, I mean, what what, what do you guys call it? The, the Their vault over there. Uh, there's still a, an entity called Lucasfilm Games. Uh, wait, no, LucasArts. Lucas Arts. There's still an entity called LucasArts. <laughs> yeah. Lucasfilm Games is no more. Um, uh, and there's uh, Disney still around. Oh, they, I heard yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. still they're, doing okay. Yeah, they're doing. They have that new uh, game movie with the rolling yeah, soccer ball. That mouse guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not about. Did you look at the concept art yet? Did you bring it up? No, no? not yet. Bring no. up that hot concept Yeah, go ahead and escape. Yeah. Great. I saw you unlock some. New. Yeah, bonus. 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 Concept, concept art, art gallery. Oh, damn. Go. So I have a question. This is.
is there a way just to, like look at these high res and like 100 percent them or are they like like what res are they in there at like because i'd like to uh, really like look at these like full screen i think that's the biggest thing yet it'll go big not as far as i know yeah. okay yeah, yeah there should be your bigger. monitor and then that'll work right yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably wait for some hacker to open up the PC version, extract all the assets, and then that's how I would look at them high res. Yeah. Yeah. We like to leave some puzzles for the super advanced hacker. I like yeah. on that one the the pencil one that you can see. It's like three it's normal sheets thing. of paper that have been taped together uh, to, <laughs> to, to like complete what this. What are those weird? <laughs> You're like, like don't little crowds on the things. side. I don't know. That's Peter's imagination. That, like, is that why they were cut? You're like, what is this? Cut this off. I mean, I guess it shows the mutations. Like, what? if you look on the right, it's all mutations. Oh, I see. So, yeah, one of the of things I loved about, like, in the commentary was listening to you guys talk about, like, how archaic the process was back when you guys were doing this. And mm -hmm. especially with the deadlines, Peter was saying that you have to do, like, what, a, a background, like, the, the lines one day, color it the next day, and then, like, digitize it on the third day or whatever. But his turnaround for all he of He was, these. like, doing background a day at some point. Yeah, so, that guy sounds like a... And there was a room, well, this, the game had, like, 100 backgrounds, I think, still. <laughs> all those scum games had a... And the first ones had 100 backgrounds, because that's all the scum system would let you number a room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So they all had, like, 100 rooms, and then we bust through that on throttle, I think, so... And you, uh, you talked about, too, like, prior to having, like, a great uh, internal network or the internet, you guys would, like, run around to different buildings to do the different steps of, like, scanning or inking, and uh, it sounded do like... Do you really want to hear about it? <laughs> we would put our stuff on a floppy disk and bring it to each other's desks and merge our code. I don't think uh, Tucker has any idea what that oh, is. Oh, it's, the... it's like a really big USB drive. Is that, like, like the <laughs> cloud? Imagine USB drive <laughs> like spin? Yeah. Yeah, and you stick it in, and you copy stuff to it, and then we copy to each other's desk, and we use this... I forget the name of the program to merge. We look at our code and merge all together by hand every uh, like three days. Uh, if we let it go too long, then it became impossible to merge. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was fun times. We didn't have source. We didn't have version control software like Perforce or Source Safe until um, I think Grim Fandango. So, jeez, wow. How did you? How did you just? I don't. I mean, how'd you deal with it? I mean, I guess you you <laughs> did it right, but like. We just mer merge it all by hand. Were, yeah. Weren't, yeah. weren't all the, uh, yeah. also we're weren't your development choose. cycles like 10 months or something on these? Like something not, really, really short? There was, there was a floppy disk really important. You see that icon? I never knew what that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people your age think it means saving or <laughs> save. It's so but weird, yeah, I that's think. That's a floppy disk. <sighs> There's your mommy. <laughs> oh, mommy. There's your mommy? Yeah. Your mommy. Yeah. Oh. So Tim, how long were development cycles yeah. on games like this and, and you know early to mid '90s? Like how long do they take to make? Yeah, um, there like there were um, it hovered around a year for a while. Like Monkey Island was nine months. What? <laughs> so weird wow. to say that. Wow. Nine and months. Then, uh, wow. This was essentially a year for most of the game, but then we what when we decided to add voice to it, that was a, the first time we'd ever done voice, or anyone had ever really done that much voice. So it was like an extra six months, and then we so we took advantage of that six months to polish it. So, so a year and a half for this game. Okay. Wow. Crazy. You mean? But, uh, growth or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like it it took us nearly the amount of time to remaster it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny how much uh, more effort you have to put into, you know, making a game as, as time has gone on. And, and you know, the price is pretty much... Actually, if you take into account inflation, the price has actually gone down for what it costs oh, yeah, to buy a game like now. A $60 yeah. Game or something. yeah. You have to save up for a long time to buy this game. Yeah. Or just buy a Sound Blaster 16. Or have your grandfather <laughs> buy it for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, do you think if your grandfather was in the store, this is what he'd pick up? He'd see these kids running on the front of the box. And be like, mm. <laughs> no, nothing exploding. <laughs> I did good on my report card, and I want this game. Thank you. Dialog trees. You guys have those in St. Rowe, right? St. Rowe. Dialog trees? Uh, Tons dialogue of trees, them. Dialog trees, a lot of trees. Yep, all of them. Every mission. Yep. Starting in. Look, we're we're uh, preluding the hot coffee. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Right, now hold on. Does the sequence have to hold everybody? Oh, you missed it. Okay. Oh, There's a whole uh, Easter egg there. So you hold it. Yeah. yeah. We can't let the ESRB yeah, know about that. Yeah, we can't let the ESRB know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. One of you, you and one of the founding fathers, step into that fireplace and things go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Stream exclusive. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Yeah, which probably. Let's just say that Canary's not the only one ringing a bell. I don't even know what that means. It's so dirty. Just say, and then whatever you say after that. Okay. So we have a question from our chat. Uh, Voidburger is asking when DLC for Day of the Tentacle is coming out because that's where oh, that's the money's at. Probably another, another 23 years. 15 years, years? Yeah. yeah. 15, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, we'll add another whole time zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> another 200 years into the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What about yeah. Bree Sanders? A new purple <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah. We could do character no, skills. No such thing as <laughs> we just hue shift yes. all the power, all the animation it. frames. It'll be fine. One new multiplayer map. You did that. Oh, yeah. How come you saw and that new fatalities? So big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you did at one point though. You did want more characters than just these three kids. Yeah, we had six like the original game. Didn't we get a seven? Or six. Right. There was seven. more than that. I think. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had six, but then. You know, the, the original game had everything mostly was a generic animation. I don't think they had special case animations until the Indiana Jones uh, Last Crusade game. So, like, everything was just a walk cycle and a talk cycle. So, you could have, like, a bunch of kids, and then you just drop them in, and well, it wouldn't affect go anything because everything was just a, like a reach. They don't think they had reach animations. So, uh, everything in our game was like, like, everyone who goes up, every kid in the game has to be animated going up and down that chimney, for example, right. and doing everything in the game. So, if you added six more, it would just be like everything times. Uh, Hey, yeah. Instead of everything times three. And we said three is smaller than six. Well, Let's do the easier one. <laughs> How did you choose who remained in the game? Which characters you kept? Yeah, we had, we had, we were our, our favorites from the first game were uh, Bernard and Razor. Where it was just the, so we had Bernard and Razor, and then we had Hoagie because we knew a guy who was a roadie for a heavy metal band, which foresaw Brutal Legend and everything. And, um, and then, uh, we had uh, someone suggested a crazy medical student because I think it was their ex girlfriend. <laughs> but I'm not sure about that story. I'm sure it's a little debated. But... <laughs> and then we had Moonglow, who was crazy hippie, and Chester, who we repurposed his art as Ned and Jen upstairs. Uh, but Moonglow never made it in. She had a crystal necklace and everything. Great. But uh, Razor, sadly. It was not there. No, but one of the bikers in full throttle named Razor, so I assume that's what happened to her. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. She went to hang out with Hoagie's uh, brother. Yeah, she went to hang out with. All right, so is there like a, a massive like <laughs> ongoing through line through all these stories where they're like somehow all interconnected Why, yes. through like time travel or some craziness? Where I majored in color theory. Well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly come up with one. I want to believe. Deeper meaning. Yeah. Go. Okay, last name. There is a joke in yeah. Throttle, I believe, where Ben, <laughs> ben said his mom thought it was funny to name all the kids after sandwiches because his real name is Ruben. Uh, but that doesn't mean the Hoagie's last name is Throttle. That's no proof of anything. <laughs> Well, I always thought that I never thought of Throttle being set in America. Like it's just set in this weird like, world, other world. But this game obviously was set in something very close to America because it's got the founding fathers in it. So probably don't exist in the same alternate timeline. Yeah. Until they write that story where they all come into the same yeah. universe and they collapse all the universes you can just, together. You can just say it's connected and it becomes canon. To it's true. Yeah. May or may not be. Like how Gone Home is set in the system shark. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what games were you guys playing around the time that this was out that kind of inspired you to make this? Or was it, I mean, where did the, I, mean, I don't think the inspiration really came from any games, and I think that's what made this one really unique. Yeah, I mean, great question. I mean, there were, uh, the games were out in 1990, this is like 92 to 93. Uh, oh my god, someone look that up. What, <laughs> what are the games? It came out in 93, but what else came out in 92? Do you know, you played the, the, the other adventure <laughs> games being made at the time were all like, um, Whoa, uh, like the King's Lord Quest stuff and all that. Yeah. Police Quest. Police Quest. Halo 2, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Did you guys play Monkey Island at all? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 we played the Monkey Island games, they were a big influence on this, and, um, uh, back then, because it was all kinds of gold blades, DOS games, I'm wondering if, um, Lemmings, no, Warcraft wasn't even out yet, yeah, this would be like this, like, um, Commander Super Sheen. Nintendo era, right, so we were playing Street Fighter 2, Lemmings, like early Super Nintendo, yeah, yeah. Super Nintendo, SimCity, 
for the yes, Marvel character. Yeah. Um, so perhaps it's like cartoony graphic, like you know, Super you Mario. Was it was another cartoony, flat shaded. Yeah, that's right. There wasn't a. But there wasn't a game that like, there, there was a game that came out a little bit after this called Tombstruck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really young, like uh, Tombstruck had like um, it had Doc from uh, Back to the Future. What? Right? It's Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tombstruck. Yeah. They had like rotoscoped animation or actual FMV mixed with cartoony, like kind of like uh, uh, Roger Rabbit. Yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, that thing. Oh my God. Tombstruck. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, and he was oh, like, weird. It's actually like him cropped into the cartoony yeah. background. That yeah. was the thing in the 70s. It's like Roger so Rabbit. They used to be uh, cartoons in the 70s to avoid animation costs, was to just do, paint a background uh -huh. and then have live action kids in front of a blue screen, uh, like walking around in it. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer went down that way. Was this Which looks weird? Was this game prior to uh, the Don Booth games? Uh, they were in arcades before this. Okay. Yeah, so Don Booth had that kind of animated. Yeah, that stuff was in the 80s, if I remember right. Yeah, that was like late 80s, I yeah. think. Yeah, okay. those Laserdisc games did exist. And I remember okay, seeing those. games released in 92. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna do this. 1992 in oh. video gaming. Mortal Kombat uh, was a huge influence. Dune 2, <laughs> Mega Man 4. Street Fighter 2. Yes. Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. Echo the Dolphin. Yeah, Wolfenstein was Holy shit, this is like my oh whole my childhood right there. Like, <laughs> wow. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, Alone second? in the Dark. Oh, we did play Alone, Alone in the, the dark. dark. That's probably why we got into 3D. Yeah, Flashback. Alone in the Dark was amazing. <laughs> Flashback. Flashback. We played a lot of Flashback. Yeah. That was 92. At 92. Yeah, Zool. On the Sega Genesis. I played... Zool's not a game. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, Zool. Yeah. Right. So there you go. That was 1992 in, in gaming. Kirby. So that's what you were playing. In the same year, as Doc. You guys are not getting very far with puzzles. Oh man, you guys <laughs> no, are actually... no. You're just talking a lot. Yeah, sorry, we're not uh, we're not uh, QA on this. We can't blow through the game. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, you're not, you're not exactly speed running this. I yeah. thought we'd be in the room top here sitting out. Okay, <laughs> so so uh, what was the uh, the record yes. at the office of who could beat this game the fastest when you were essentially doing? Yeah, you know, we had a tester who claimed they could play through it in two minutes, but this world speed record online is like 18 minutes. So I think he was lying. <laughs> <laughs> He just might have known some cool Frank glitches. Yeah. Frankly, Back in the day, I used to never play the games I we worked on because I was terrified of finding bugs. <laughs> now I do it a lot more. That's crazy. I just finish the game and I would just walk away from it and never play it for years. <laughs> just cooler yeah. not to look back. Yeah, it's cooler not to look back. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> These games are like big explosions. <laughs> I seriously had not played Dead of Tentacle until we started this remastering process since like it came out. Yeah. That's crazy because, like, for me, I probably played this game maybe like five or six times since the game came out. Yeah. Yeah. Same. You just can't. You can't. Eat. I mean, I've gotten over that now. I play our games a lot as they're coming out to check for bugs and stuff. But at the time, it just it's so it's so horrifying to get used to. You know, game development's like, right? Yeah. Like it's just there's so many bugs in the games, and as you're coming up to ship, you're like, oh my god, there's so many bugs in this game, we're not gonna be able to catch them all, and then you catch like. Hopefully, most of them, but just knowing that they're more in there just keeps you up at night. <laughs> and oh, and now with streaming, it's worse. Yeah, you could, time, right? We didn't really patch stuff. That's you could just it. deny like, oh, that. Oh, I haven't played it until 15 years from now. We were remastering. <laughs> How like, like, years I feel like if people had issues, then it was probably on their end and they needed to play around with their uh, config or sys. Well, yeah, well, it's exactly definitely on their end. So, what was really funny. It's not that hair, sure, no? <laughs> what was really funny about uh, working on this game was that it illustrated like a, a fascinating generational gap between everyone. Here we go. I'm so young. I'm so young. Yeah. Well, no, it's just <laughs> me. I I'm 12 oh, years old. old. <laughs> so it's like it's it's you, you know, who who had worked on this game from the beginning, yeah, and then old. and then uh, <laughs> Matt Hansen, who is the producer, Middle and Spath. You guys are both super fans of this title, so you yeah. know like everything about it. Um, you have the original box, right? With like the manual and everything. I've got three copies of this game. Yeah. <laughs> Share the love, uh, buddy. For me, I had never played it before. <laughs> and then Aaron Hansen, uh, who is, or Aaron Jacobs, who was one of our programmers, was going through code that was older than him on it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just crazy to see that. Yeah. Like, the code, I heard he asked the code to buy him booze once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, the same thing. 
Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> it was just really cool to see that, like like this one game that a lot of people value a whole lot, and it's everybody working on it yeah. from all these different. I mean, it's sort of like the Bible in that way, I guess. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yeah. I can handed see down it. from generation to generation, yeah, yeah. full of wisdom, <laughs> a holy text, worth building your life around. Do you have a moment for me to talk to you about our Lord and Schaefer? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. See new Easter egg in this room. Oh, not this no, room. The one no, the corner just about. outside. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> am I am I hot? Subjective interpretation. Yeah. Am I, yeah, fun. Have fun. What am I standing underneath? What any of these pictures are. But in one version, Sam Max is, I mean, yes, Sam they were remastering it before us, and they had taken Sam Max out. Oh, really? We went and got Sam Max put back in. <laughs> yeah. Steve put it's all directly. Yeah, how much can you speak to the previous remaster? Because, I mean, there are stories online about what was happening, you know, when it was still LucasArts, and then something happened, and then Disney came around and, and saved everything, so... Um, it was... What can I say about the previous? We really wanted to do it ourselves. So we, we had a definite idea of how the art should be remastered, so we mostly did that our own selves. Mm-hmm. There had been versions. There had been some before. I really don't know how much I can say about that. <laughs> okay, okay. So <laughs> a lot of parties right? involved making this game. It's, this game is a miracle that it, it got remastered because there's a yeah. lot of parties involved. Uh, you know how big companies, it's amazing when stuff gets done, uh, especially when you get a bunch of them working together. So it was only the fact that we had some actual adventure game fans at each company who were big advocates of it that, it, that the deal got made. Sorry, um, different and I don't want to ruin that right now by talking about it. No, no, I understand. I want there to be, I want all these games to be remastered. So thank you to yeah. all of our friends who helped make this lovely thing exist. At LucasArts, Sony and Disney. Going up to those archives was amazing. That was fun. It was the best. Yeah. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty huge fan. I, I've been a huge fan of these games growing up, and uh, I was allowed to run rampant in the uh, Lucas archives. And At the barn, we went yeah, to the barn looking for Day of the Tentacle art and finding Monkey Island Two art and Monkey Island One art and stuff. And it was fun, you know, just the best. We'll throw two art. We'll throw two art. We'll throw art two. So, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> what other fu- what other interesting things did you find when you were looking around there? Uh, did you get to see other people's projects, or are they like, no, you can only look at the the, the LucasArts stuff? I mean, we saw a lot of film stuff, but we couldn't really, you know, yeah. they don't really want you opening that stuff up and looking at it. It would just probably turn into mummy dust if you open it up. Gotcha. But um, <laughs> we we saw all of the LucasArts stuff, all the flat files. They're the same flat files that used to be in the hallway at the office, you know, with all the games in it. So it was like um, all of the old games, like Afterlife. There's a drawer for Afterlife, and... Uh, uh, for games that, that no one ever heard, knew about because they never came out. You don't see some of those. Interesting. Secrets. And plus, like, just skeletons everywhere, right? That, <laughs> <laughs> that I just imagine that's there. Well, there were lots of beige know. PC boxes. All Here's where we implemented uh, some really expensive mirror technology. That's always expensive oh, yeah. to put in a game when you have a reflective yeah. mirror like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. The scene has to be rendered twice. Uh, <laughs> frame tanks, usually. It's a complicated ray tracing. Oh. Really challenging in VR. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should see this game in VR. Yeah, they have the Tentacle VR edition coming uh, next year, right? In Unreal 4 with realistic poop yep. shaders. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah. If you have the concept art for this room, then uh, I don't know if we put this one out, but the calendar used to have a different picture on it. Wait, let me see. Do you have the concept art for that? <laughs> yeah, uh, see, go ahead and escape. See if there's concept art for it. Uh, I think shows that, right that right shows the original art? No, it shows that penguin, oh, okay. which is how it is. That's a good question. There's definitely a version of it that's a little, yeah. a little more risque than Peter and Drew. How many sandwiches does this movie have in pants? I think he uh, just make, meanwhile, produces them. That's my favorite joke. Meanwhile. Yeah. Meanwhile. <laughs> yeah. The meanwhile. Mm-hmm. Let's see if you can get a concept art uh, for that room. We should mention very quickly that Double Fine was also nice, of a, nice enough to give us some codes for this game that were given out. Uh, Promotional consideration was so provided nice. in the form of free copies of the game. Yes. <laughs> uh, but that's not why you guys are streaming it, or no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. This game is fucking fantastic, and I'm so glad that it's out right now. There, there's a penguin. All right, so we're How looking at... Here these are, yeah. so, like, what it actually looks like. Well, they were like. scanned. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, like... Now that it's been all high-res, yeah. the smooth yeah. edges of the shapes are really come through. Yeah, it's true. 
Oh, oh now no. look, did we clear the color version of the room? Uh, they they yeah, both there's... showed this thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> something, I'm not saying history has been modified, have you? No, I'm <laughs> saying that we definitely include things. Well, we'll never be, able to tell, <laughs> <laughs> never be able to tell that detail. <laughs> oh. Interesting, then. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What did happen on January 4th? No, I think Peter Those mentions it in this, in this room. I think it's on the commentary. He says that's his son's birthday, I think. It's okay. either his son's or his wife's. Wait, he was working yeah. on, his, on his son's birthday? Yeah. yeah. That's what a slave driver I am. <laughs> <laughs> Your son's going to have a bunch of birthdays, at least 20. So, like, yeah. <laughs> you should be here, buddy. I would have, like, I went all Elon Musk on him. <laughs> They're literally making history. <laughs> Three different times. Uh, well, okay, so I've got a question for you. You've, you've presided over quite a few games that a lot of people put in their, their top 50 of all time. I mean, do you know that you're working on something that's going to be great and amazing and awesome? Or are you just like, oh shit, there's just bugs, there's bugs. Shit, just ship it as fast as possible, you know? First we have the discussion of like, where do we want this to hit in the best games of all time? Should we go for like 49? That's like a safe spot, you know? Uh, 38, because we, we hadn't had anything in the 20s for a while, so we... You, know, you don't want to go 49, it's too easy to get bumped. Yeah, yeah. I need to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Middle. You gotta have a safe 30, 35. Yeah. <laughs> we know, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, Anyone who makes a game is trying to make it the best game of all time every time they make it. Um, and but we had less of a clue of what impact they had back then because there's no. But I think even with the internet, like it takes time. You know, you release a game and people like are often kind of be like grumpy about it or whatever, and then move on. And then it, it takes time for people to really feel like how like you know you hear stories about. Um, you look at the commentary for like Wizard of Oz, and people were like, "Oh, a big flop." Wizard of Oz was considered like a huge flop at the time. It was only like. I'm going on for a whole long story. That's <laughs> fine. The point is, you just never know. Uh, you always think you're working on the greatest game of all time. And, uh-huh. and as George Bush W said, in time will judge. That's an exact quote. Clarify everything for you? Yeah. I couldn't even get the order of George W. Bush's name correct. No, if you look it up on Wikipedia, there's like ellipses everywhere. But yes, we always thought we were working on the greatest game of all time. I'm surprised it slipped down to number 49. I'm on the road. But maybe the remaster will bump that back up. Two more points. A little bit. Two spots. And that's I funny. It's the road calling your Solid 47. So these guys were originally a playable character. <laughs> yeah, they were going to be, I think his name was Chester, who was going to be one of the characters. He worked in a coffee shop. He was a beatnik. Okay, if I, unload I think those, the beatnik character finally got in Griff Fandango in that beatnik cafe. That was yeah. really, I always wanted to put beatnik well, well, beat poets in the game. William. Drinking so coffee. Thank you, this is me William. holding a cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like beat poets so much? I don't actually like beat poetry. <laughs> I really dislike beat poetry, which is funny because I often go and say like bookstore and look all the beat poetry. Like those are I love the covers of those books. Which do you dislike more, beat poets or slam poets? Oh my god, slam poetry is worse. I mean, obviously all poetry is terrible, but like, <laughs> uh, I just think Spaff beats. It's a fun. It's a fun era. It's a fun era, like jazz, the snapping of the fingers, uh-huh. and I like the. Yeah, and I'm doing a very, like, unresearched <laughs> parody of something I was too young to understand. So, big jerk, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun for me. That's the important thing. Yeah, how did you research A horse is a horse. Any horse. It's, it's incredibly We watched accurate. a lot of it's cartoons. Uh, uh, we traveled in time, obviously. Uh, we did uh, travel uh, back to Colonial Day. It shows. It does show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's he going to get those statues out of that room? Oh. I mean, they built the, the corner of the ceiling. <laughs> not going to the door. <laughs> Uh, we, um, we just watched a lot of cartoons. And, uh, Twin Peaks, right? I feel like this is when Twin Peaks was new. Yeah. Back when, during this, Animal yeah, Island, we were like watching The Simpsons was new. I don't do And it was blowing all of our minds. We were like, have you seen this show? The Simpsons is funny. <laughs> and, uh, and we all get together around Gilbert's house and watch Twin Peaks. So there's probably a lot of anything. Twin Peaks references. There's the there. Damn Good Coffee reference. Yeah, Damn Good Coffee probably was very, very top of the line. At the time. <laughs> Chat's, uh, chat's throwing it up for the horse now. They really like the horse. They're fans of the horse. Yeah. Multiple people in the chat. Multiple people in the chat have also wanted to tell all you guys that when Psychonauts 2 was announced, that they screamed a lot. Nice. Ice cream up to you. Me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
It's one of those people. Hopefully the pain of money rapidly leaving your wallet while you were sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't that's scream. Painful. I didn't scream when I saw that, but I, I was streaming that whole conference because that's usually what I do. And my reaction was just, what? And that was it. Yeah, I just remember you freaking out. <laughs> yeah. That's all I had to say was just, what? I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> I couldn't say anything else. Said, you found yourself a little bit poor uh, yeah. because we'd taken your money. <laughs> there wasn't even time for us to shut up. We just took your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see you later. Yeah. Uh, did you see Nurse Edna yet? Nice teeth. Nice teeth. Nice teeth. Give me those teeth, horse. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I love that horse's smile. He's got yeah, like a what's that so sugar-coated pup? What's a what's a cereal with a bear mascot? Uh, Sugar Smacks. Sugar Smacks. Sugar Smacks. Yep. Sugar Smacks for That's the best name, too. Sugar Smacks. <laughs> Is that oh, cat? cat didn't mean to go to jail. Cat. One of, like, the funniest, weirdest things in this game is the cat's butt. Just somebody but that, in the original version that the, the never mind. That's class that's a very just, standard. that is standard. This game was way out of its time. Drawing the anus of anything. <laughs> anus is except for Kurt Vonnegut in back and uh, Versus Champions. That was the first anus in literature. The second anus was uh Dead Temple. Whose call was that? <laughs> See if we were doing this as a live stream on Kotaku, it would be like Tim the Schaefer, headline would be like Tim Schaefer discusses anus. Oh, no. In the first the anus. The first anus. Yeah. Tim talks about his first anus. <laughs> would be the head. I mean, uh, Hoagie's got an excellent book, Crack, as well. Yeah, yeah. we were pioneers in Crack. <laughs> but, pioneers in Crack. But real-time sure. butt technology in general is... But, uh, I mean, nowadays, everyone draws butts on cats. They make an X or they make a dot. Yeah. It's for common, but we were, we were really cutting the edge of, of, of pushing that. This predates it all by like 20 years. Just the fact that cats poop was just not talked about in <laughs> children's literature for a long time. <laughs> but um, you see it in Costume Quest. Yeah. The first Costume Quest, a cat that walks mm-hmm. away from you. And uh, it's a very gratuitous um, mm-hmm. elimination yeah, shot. That's why it has the M rating, right? I'm surprised we passed the opportunity to show how he trying to fit down that trap We door. could flip over to B. Bernard now, right? Using our... You can B. Bernard? Yeah. <laughs> I just, we can't see it because we're covering it up, but you can click on the portraits of the other characters if you want to switch to them at any point. I thought he had to make the... Um... Yeah, we're going to do it right now. We're going to Bernard, yeah, yeah. switch to Bernard. I, I think he needs paint the yeah, watch to be Bernard, but he, he has to make the super battery still. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Shapes are just so pleasant. Yeah, look at this old. Like sometimes you forget if you're you're watching the old one or a new one, you can just kind of forget sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He's old. He's doing it. He's doing it. (laughs) People from other countries are really stumped on this puzzle. They're like, we don't know the mythology of your crazy land. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What's this kumquat? Your your country was founded by uh, some sort of kumquat vandal. I, I actually think for a lot of people in Europe, uh, yeah. for, this is true for me, and I've heard a lot of people say that this actually taught us a lot about American history. <laughs> <laughs> and this you know, like weird, like you know, like weird, just names oh of people like tropes about like, them and stuff. You'll learn these guys' names pretty yeah. well. You may not know anything about them, but you'll know John Hancock and Thomas Jefferson, yeah. and George Washington, and oh. all that. We just always figured that the, the yeah, common thing to say was that Europeans do more about American history than American history. We thought. Why, and Dot sold more in France than in the United States. <laughs> really? Really? Well, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Maybe just maybe France and Germany put together. Uh, I had noticed that there were they said in the original credits that there were voices for German. Were those also well, ported over? Yes. I don't know if I do that because I was like, wait, did we? Wait, <laughs> how, how, voices how many voices? Uh, how many voices? I'm not sure what the process of cutting that all up was though and if we got them uncompressed and that we'd have to ask Paul I don't know if we could I don't know because he wouldn't be able to do that I don't think we have the death it's for German but the German voice is in there it might still be compressed did the act go right between his head and his hat yeah I never realized he did that that was a nice animated moment yeah destroying trees in the past bring about change in the future oh my god so who did the uh, the animations for like the actual characters? Because they they feel hand animated and then probably you know done in the computer. They were uh, Larry Hayer was our lead animator. Lila Dowling did the cat butts. All the cats were hers. <laughs> she did a lot of the animation and um, Sean Turner. Uh, and maybe. 
Somebody did the intro sequence. That's Kyle Walden, who went on to co-direct Minions. Oh, really? Yeah, he was an intern. Oh, I never put that He was an intern, um, uh, intern, and on his internship, he did that whole animation. Wow. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. And now... <laughs> <laughs> That used game. to work we, on one of the top 50 it's games. A very time. well animated now, movie. Co directed. Those movies did, are hilarious. It did extremely well. I think, I'm sure I it think did. Minions is like the highest grossing animated hey, film of some time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Things do surprisingly well. Mm -hmm. Like certain politicians. But I mean, oh. time will tell. <laughs> I hope he comes to the office someday so you can talk to him. But <laughs> <laughs> and he's right behind the, oh, and he's behind the screen. <laughs> Whoa. Worst surprise one. party ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at them all in there. Ooh, I don't feel so. Now, good. did you guys ever resolve why there are recurrent Ned and Jeds, or uh? Uh, what is it, Red and Dr. Fred throughout this history? This is Zed. This is Zed? Because it's very Z inbred. And more inbred, Ned, oh. Ned and Jed. Yeah. But, like, there's this discussion of, like, does it alternate generations, or is it... You mean, like, why those same three characters appear in all different... Uh -huh. Uh, shows what you know about, uh, <laughs> Mendel <laughs> biology. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mendel, uh, this theory of P mutation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's over here. <laughs> I like the, um, the dissection of a tentacle <laughs> it's biology there. It's yeah. like all inputs and then one output or something? Yeah. <laughs> so, and seriously, uh, have you watched a cartoon? You know that when uh, two ducks get married mm -hmm. and the uh, female duck is white and the male duck is like a darker color. Mm -hmm. They'll have babies, they'll have six babies. They're like three boys that have the same color as a dad and three girls that have the same color as a mom. And that's yeah. how mating works <laughs> in <laughs> cartoons. And that leads to a certain amount of replication of uh, features. features over yeah, time. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I know. Yeah, there you go. What is that weird protrusion on the left side of the tentacle? Because he has a hand. You'd say it's a hand, but there's only one of them, so... Uh, maybe it's the anatomy of. I mean, there's only purples in this. The joke I like here is how detailed they are on the tentacle, and the humans are like a sketch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't really care. Thank <laughs> you guys. I have a meeting. Is that awkward for me to sneak out for a meeting? I have another meeting. How long do you guys get play all night? Uh, we're probably gonna go actually, for I don't know another 15, 20 minutes. No, or maybe, yeah, maybe another 15, 20. All right, I'll hang out then. All okay. right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. gracing us with your presence. Someone might come in here and drag me out to oh, a meeting. We, yeah, we're actually going to get dragged out. We have to well. leave because uh, Lee needs this room. The Headlander team. Oh, we're keeping Headlander from having a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We will actually tear this down and murder us all. <laughs> <laughs> we have to like some more concept art. Um, nice. Any last things? Did you go up on the roof yet? Go up on the roof through the chimney. Just we're, got we're, up there. Yeah, we're there. On the roof. Oh, you already did? Do you see the seagull from Loom? It, not, it was, no it was, it was there. The seagull but... from Loom. Oh, this, Loom was a game that you played your staff. Uh -huh. Oh, the flag. Crankbox, yo, crankbox. <laughs> I like how modern the chimney is now. So, um, so I, I, that's actually a pretty good question. You're talking about Loom, and that was Brian Marardi, right? Yeah. And yep. he, there were jokes about that in Monkey Island, and that's why I actually played Loom, was because of the salesman pitching Loom at the beginning of Monkey Island. I think Monkey Island was my it first worked. game. Yep. <laughs> it did work. I was like, what the hell is this that Loom game? Joke. I'm gonna claim that joke because we had. We had to wire up all these close-ups in Monkey Island, and we didn't have art for the pirates yet, and so I grabbed the close-ups for Loom, and there was that character, Cobb. And what we did with the, when we do programmer art, we always mess it up so everyone knew it was programmer art, so I drew like a little sailor hat on him, and I drew the ask me about Loom button as just an in-joke in the office. Because the more you mess up the art, the more the less likely they are to keep it, I thought. And so <laughs> that, that, that was just a dumb joke. And then, like, everything in that game, they're like, nope, that's staying in, that's good. Let's have the sailor hat and everything. Really? So staying in the game. That's a character from Loom. And uh, the sales pitch. The sales pitch is written so that you click on it, and he starts talking. And if you try to override the cutscene, he goes into a longer version of the sales pitch. I don't know if a lot of people found it. There you go. Okay. There's your Monkey Island Loom trivia story. Loom badge. That's funny.
working. We are so yeah. Yeah. beyond, I'm sure. Yeah, I think Teresa's asking about Griffin Day. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And your friend in the future. By the way, right. um, I think we have to. We have to sneak away, you guys. Okay. Right. Oh. Are you playing it? Are you gonna keep playing it? Or, we're gonna uh, keep playing it for a little bit. We're gonna play for a little bit. Yeah. Let's we'll, just beat it. Let's just stay here until we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna, I mean, choice. you guys have been playing for longer than 18 minutes. Yeah. Here, and I don't think this you ever saw the record. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a good first run. <laughs> for okay, you. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for playing Data Tentacle. Thanks, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks. Everyone yeah, is awesome. in there. Is anyone watching that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. People there. It's like 100 and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that one. All right, well, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, 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 thanks a lot, guys. guys. See ya. Bye. 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 So, All right, now that those guys are gone, right. let's talk shit about them. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's something I got. To say. No, they were very nice people. Uh, so nice answer. that they actually gave us a couple copies of this game to give yeah, away. Yeah. Uh, should re uh, restate that. Uh, it's been posted in the chat, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, we have a link right below the stream on Twitch uh, that takes you to a survey. Just fill out your email, and tomorrow we'll be randomly picking five people to get free copies of Day of the Tentacle for the PC, yeah. for Steam. Yeah, one of the top and 50 games of all time. One of the top 50. I'm pretty sure it's like PC Gamer it's, or something. It's up, oh yeah, it's gotta be it up has there. to be up there. Yeah. yeah. Way up there. So, so everybody, just so you know, the Easter egg they were talking about is yes. this picture here. The distinguished gentleman. Can we tell who that is? Can we? Oh, yes. I believe so. Is it I'm really is far it, away from is the Is it Jar Jar? That, that is indeed Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, because like, I saw somebody tweet it. I saw somebody tweet it uh, yesterday, and like it was just this really like pixelated zoom up, and they just they just said I'm done. My, my, my son sends me a picture, and he's like, "Why? <laughs> you have raised your son very well." I try to. I try. <laughs> Quicksilver is correct. It's like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> So, um, I guess, to me, one of the, so you've never played this game. Well, you have played this game. I've played maybe the first five minutes, because I was, I was like, when I was first getting into college, I was like starting to play all the point and clicks I'd never played. Yeah, you have kid. to, this so is like, one of the ones yeah, you have to yeah, play. Yeah, I kind of started one. from the, the last games and started working my way back, but mm. I didn't get back to, this was like the next on the list, because I did Full Throttle. Yeah, Full Throttle's amazing. I was playing, uh, it's not the same people, but uh, Sam and Max, I had played that too, and that was great. Sam and Max is another amazing game. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of next on the list, and then once they announced this too, I was like, You're well, like, I well guess, I'm not going to touch it. I yeah, guess exactly. I'm waiting. Because I was actually thinking about playing it uh, a couple months ago, and then yeah. I just like like I knew that it was like oh man it's just it's on the cusp it's, it's so coming. close it's yeah. coming it's coming it's got to be here. There it is one eight hundred Star Wars exactly yeah. I right it. there yeah right there one eight hundred Star Wars. You know earlier when they were saying you know I hope it's like a porn line now I really hope that they own the fact that Design, it's still a Star Wars number and that it's all like Star Wars themed porn. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we have the Star Wars name. George Lucas well, ain't gonna be happy. We might as well make use of it. George <laughs> Lucas is rich and doing something else. <laughs> He's bitter that he sold Star Wars now or something, but sitting on a lot of money. <laughs> That's what he seemed like when they interviewed him about Force Awakens and stuff. He just seemed like, well, yeah, they made this movie and it's good. And <laughs> <laughs> so we're counting on one of uh, one of our viewers to actually purchase one eight hundred Star Wars and do something with it, right? Yeah. Well, I think someone owns it. I mean, I can't imagine. I would imagine that Disney's just sitting on it, right? Just to pull it open for something else, because I mean, they own everything. You think if they owned really it, yeah. they would do something with it, though, right? Like it. It did nothing. Green. There's nothing there. It's well, like they'll reopen it's not that it. there's nothing there. There's that very nice dial tone lady there. I like. Okay, I that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just took forever to get to her. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's like it's the it's the phone number to Tim's desk. Uh, Whoa. And that that's why he that's, yeah, he was, oh, he was, was no wasn't answer. there. Was, that's why he wasn't no, there, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna up, we're gonna amplify the audio. When we call, you'll be able to hear it in the Skype call just a phone ringing on the hook. <laughs> Uh, what do you suppose Purple's up to? Is now? this the g adventure game that has the well, part where you can put a hamster in a microwave or something? Or well, is it a different game? You can do that. You can do it twice. Yes, you can do that twice. in Maniac Mansion, and okay. you can do that in Maniac this game. Maniac Mansion is part of Critical Path, and this one, yeah. it's not necessary. Um, okay. There is a. Uh, 
conversation you can have about that because the character whose hamster it was is in this game. Yeah, so oh, he's he's okay. uh conducting what's his name? Experiments Fred, on small Ned, and Ted. He's Ed. Ed. Okay, so uh, one of the characters there is like having repressed repressed memories, and he's like, "Something happened, and then ding." And it's like, but the thing is, you don't get it unless you've played yeah, that. Good that right, game. Right. But the funny thing is, like, the game is right there in the room for you to play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember. So let's somebody, yeah, go, let's I remember go seeing somebody yeah. ask about that, and yes, Maniac Mansion is in this version too. Yeah, yeah. it's the original one. They didn't remake. Yeah, it they didn't remake special. that one. But yeah, you can totally play it. Which is it's the other door. Which is nuts that you can do that. Game hey, within a game. There's another uh, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time One that hand. also uh, has a secret area you can go to replay the original Prince of Persia. Yep. Yeah. In it. Yeah. The original I'm Prince Bernard of Persia. Really. Still I a pretty solid your game. House five years yeah, ago. I like it. It's broke into your kind of hard, bag. but yeah, not with the keyboard. In the keyboard, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. The gamepad, I can imagine. It being yeah. I mean, I when I play Prince of Persia, it's because it was on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. That's got to be difficult if it's just the D-pad and like a button. Yeah. Because, like, the idea is you're supposed to be holding left and, like, tapping up and down as you're doing things, timing. Yeah. So the keyboard is tough. Easy. Yeah. Mm, towards the end, it got tough. The only reason why it's tough is because of the timer. Yeah. If you can take... Yeah, it's like a, yeah. what, two-hour timer? No, it's Hour 60 timer? minutes. 60, 60 minutes. minutes, that's right. Yeah, you gotta beat the game in 60 minutes. So, like... Yeah. You replay it a, a so lot of times and you get good at it. Like that's what made that game thing? challenging. Yeah, Mike in the chat's saying it, uh, it's one. Of, it's on one of Edna's monitors. No, it's right. It's in right here. The game is, is right it? inside here. Oh, yeah. maybe he's talking about something else. Then. Yeah. Nice hand. Yeah. So if you Does end this dialogue, tricks? you can go. No, well, the funny thing is, like, you can go pick up the hamster, and there like, it is. the very first thing. Yeah. yeah. Something. Something happened. Happened to him. <laughs> What happened to the old <coughs> I, I don't <laughs> When I try, all I can think of is a flash of light and this horrible sound. <laughs> What's the horrible sound? It was sort of like, ding, oh God, I hear it in my so yeah, it's it's one of the critical path Five things you have to do in many expansions to Bye. to finish the game. You have to Please put the hamster in the microwave. Okay. <laughs> well, is it critical path or not? I, um, I think you, you actually do you have to do it in this one too. You do. But he doesn't. There's no pop. There is no. The, the hamster does yeah. not die. He is important. Yeah. So just use I've got the one just like this packed yeah. away in the garage. Oh, okay. So when you use the computer and hit start, now they put it in a little. Bada okay. bing. Nice, nice. So nice. not only are you getting. Day of the Tentacle, you are also getting the original game, Maniac yeah. Mansion, which it is based off. But it's I weird, though, know. because, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, do I need to play Maniac Mansion to play Day of the Tentacle? Yeah. And the answer is an absolute no. Yeah. The fact that they even included the game in here should let you know that, like, no, you do not need to play this. Yeah. It's 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 completely different, though. Like, that's, that's right. what I was asking. It's like, where, how did you go from that to this? Yeah, because you pick, like, completely different characters to go into the mansion. And... Uh-huh. I forget, do the characters do different things, or is it just like... Yeah, they, they all have different different uh, paths, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Holy and crap. you can actually select a couple characters that prevent you from, from finishing the game, yeah. Huh. Wow. It's like it's like the old fuck you game design. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean that was most get pointless. kicked in the face, you know, whatever. It's, it's like one of the space quests where if you kiss an alien at the, at the bar near the beginning of the game, you get to the end like right before you're done. It's like oh, you blew up because you kissed an alien. You kiss an alien, they put a, a, a face uh, alien inside of you, and then you just blow up. It's like well. <laughs> Uh, Maniac Mansion was on like a ton of things too. Next, the Adon's that saying that they ha they censored the hamster thing in the NES version. Yeah, anything yeah. That where there was blood, they took it out of the NES version. Okay. So there was there was a couple things. Though the thing is, it's like it's still a pretty good game. It's not even though it's, it's quote unquote censored. If you have the NES version or access to it, in yeah. a lot of ways, it's a lot easier to play. Yeah. Than this one is. It was the first version of it I played. Way back when. Did, was yeah. it just the controller that made it better, or what? Uh, it was just easier to find the things you didn't have to pixel yep. hunt. Okay. Huh. Um, but you don't have to pixel hunt in this game, even though there really isn't much of it, because you can use the right stick, and every time you tap it, um, it will lock onto whatever object is there. So I'm wondering if I can actually do that right now in huh. here. Because, like, yes, yeah, so I can use the controller, and, oh, there is no there is no lock-on on this one. So, But when you're okay. playing Maniac Mansion... Um, 
so you're playing Day of the Tentacle, you can use the right stick to, to lock on items. So the game is considerably easier now. Mm -hmm. It's much more streamlined to play. Okay. Huh. It's so many verbs. Yeah, and all the <laughs> verbs are there. So yeah, like, here, I'll go ahead and let go of the mouse. So when I'm in the room, if I use the right stick, It'll just snap to oh, whatever okay. all the objects are that are in there. Is it like a highlight too? Because I know the Monkey Island. Yeah, if you, hi if you hold up, okay. it'll just highlight for you yeah, too. Because yeah. it's gonna say like it uses the Oops. same. Oh, uses, no. Yeah, you can right and left D pad to switch between oh, characters nice. quickly too. Yeah, because it was like I know the Monkey Island ports also had that radial verb menu that was really nice to use. So yeah, they did a really good job on the controls in this. Yeah. See what else we can get done before we stop. This That's room is it. pointless until uh, yeah. some, somewhere later in the game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> God, when I, I remember because I didn't really know about this game until like years after Hoagie would it was really out. Love I just remember like looking because like. Get pretty, much, music pretty much, pretty much. Get the tape. Pretty much every area in this game, like the art style, everything's very warped. You know, everything yeah. very exaggerated and all that. And I just, from, I just thought it looked a lot like uh, Rocco's Modern Life. Wow. Yeah, because they did that with their art style too. Yeah, I think Rocco came out after this though. I think that was like a 94, 95 cartoon. Yep. Hey, you got to hit F1. They, they, I think I feel like the MIDI of this is like is like way better music sounding. Oh, that's right. It switches back to the original music, too. Yeah, it switches uh -huh. the original mini. Yeah, nice. So you, yeah, you take a listen. Hold on. I haven't gotten to this far. Uh... Oh, shit. I just remembered something I forgot to ask, Oh, yeah, the MIDI. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the MIDI on this. Because it's just it's so cheesy sounding. All right, what was it? I forgot to ask Tim about tank controls. I know he has very... Uh, strong opinions. Strong tank? opinions about tank control. Oh, really? Grim Fandango has c tank controls. Yes. And there's an achievement in the Grim Fandango. Uh, you play completely with tank. Yeah. Yeah. It's I forget what it's called, but it's like. It's basically I think it's like doing it right or something. Yeah, like. doing it right. It's like you play <laughs> the way Tim thinks you should play it or whatever. It's That's funny. Cool. I should have asked them if they ever thought of putting tank controls in this. Oh well. I forgot if you don't turn the stereo off, it just keeps doing this forever. Yep. <laughs> so every time you come here and it's Oh, like... the bar fell off. Yes. I am with some people in the chat. I kind of like tank controls for certain things also. Yeah. Yeah. Isosa Sakara is saying the way it's meant yeah, to be played. Yeah, the way it's meant to be played. Is what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, the, there's the uh, HD port of the Resident Evil GameCube remake, and they put in, like, normal analog controls, but you can still play with t tank controls, and, like, I played the whole thing with tank because it felt so weird. It was like you were cheating at the game because you could just slip right between corners and zombies so yeah. easily. It was just, like, there was no... And that game's all about, like, getting messed up by zombies and going, oh, that was a bad choice. So you can uh, quickly cycle items by just uh, going, pulling up the menu, and then just like click drag into a character. Oh, nice! Could you do that in the original? Yeah, you could always do that. Okay. Yeah. They play this cutscene once. It's like I'll just go do that, and then like every time afterwards, it's just like it's just instant, just really quickly. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the thing that makes the puzzle so magical for me in this is like. Hey, you ha you ha you have the same house, but in three different time zones, yeah. and three different you know time periods, and you're trying to think of like, okay, I have all these objects, but yeah, yeah. you know I need to take some from different time periods to, use to complete the puzzles. Yeah, and then and because of that, they make the puzzles make you feel really smart when you're done, which is like what a good puzzle should do. Yeah, and I think that's that's. That's half of the charm of this game, so right? The other half of the charm is these dialogue sections you have with people, and they're just like, everybody's like a cartoon character, and they really captured that really well. Yeah, I just love this dude talking, the spit just shoot out of his mouth all the time. <laughs> here, you should, here, listen to this. I can imagine what this dude's voice is gonna be like. I hope I use my mom. Hey, if I listened to my mom, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> yep. the voice I thought he would have. Always matches. They did a good job with the voices on this. Yeah. You know, but it's like the precursor of like first voice acting. It's great that they. I wouldn't say the first voice acting, but like the first time yeah. they did it on a scale like this. Yeah, it's 
great that they still had like the, the adaptation stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I got to open the grade. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to open it. Yeah, I know so many games that are old. Like even if they want to remaster them, like they can't make some things better just because the original assets are just gone. Well, that's like that's a lot of a lot. Of, pretty much every game that has pre-rendered backgrounds. The original renders are gone for the most part. Oh, the original files, so they couldn't re-render them higher up. Yeah, resin. like the um. Is that Final? You said that uh, Final Fantasy VII, right? Yeah. Uh, eight. Basically, all of Square Enix's games, what back from when they were SquareSoft, like project. if they had pre-rendered assets, the originals are gone. So, like, if you get Final Fantasy VII HD, it's just they're scaled up and they do some kind of filtering that you can toggle on and off. If you uh -huh. want to be like with Vaseline over it, or if you just want to be pixely, but. I mean, even stuff like, uh, again, Square, but they had, like, they did the HD ports of the Kingdom Hearts games. Uh -huh. And, like, even though those were PS2 games, they were like, yeah, we're just flat out missing some of the models and textures for some things, so they just had to make them from scratch well, all over again. You know, that's... Like, that sucks. That's one reason why, when I work here, I spend a little bit of extra time making sure that this stuff gets properly archived. Because you're, yeah, in, you're in production, you know. Yeah. You're working really hard, and... Yeah. You know, you, you're already here 50, 60 hours a week, and then at the very end of it, it's like, shit, I need to spend, like, another 20 minutes to, you know, kick yeah. this out like so every, that it will be preserved yeah, every, 10 years down the line. Every single week while I'm working here, I'm, I'm usually finding something that's like, oh, I should probably keep that for later. That'd be cool to have and, and to preserve. And, like, I mean, like what we did with the Saints Row, uh, the Saints Row PSP game we showed. Yeah. Like, Saints Row under, Undercover. Yeah, I, I like, I mean, aside from releasing that to everybody, we, uh... I mean, that's a good way of archiving. <laughs> yeah, it's... That, totally, that'll never be gone now, but, uh... Yeah, I've just got, like, a whole hard drive that I'm just filling up with old stuff. Even from, like, uh... <clears throat> our previous Saints Row games. Quiet, like, I know we have some dear. weird builds of I two and three and stuff. Ideas yeah, I've, I've done a pretty good job yeah, of making sure that anything old Saints Row that we worked on, like, up. for example... Um, I shouldn't reveal. I shouldn't reveal oh, what, sure. what, what old Saints Row stuff we've got going on. Yeah. <laughs> They're things. Yeah, yeah. They're old Saints Row things that we've had, and I've done a really good job making sure that we've kept old builds, no. old art, old oh, assets. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm so glad now that I did that when I first started here eight years ago, because now we're actually able to show off that stuff. I knew that it was going to come around. I didn't know how or how when, yeah. but like it's starting to pay off. <laughs> yeah, totally. So if you're out there working at other game studios or in a place where, you know, you're working on something that you think someone might want later, yeah, you know, put in the extra time, put in the extra 10, 15, 20 minutes at the end of the day to archive yeah, that stuff. It's, and me personally, even before I started working here in the, in the games industry, like, I was still pretty passionate about making sure that old game stuff gets archived because, like, there's no, there's no real official organization that... I believe there is a video game museum now that is doing that. That. Yeah. So is that in New York? Whatever you say, George. There is a video game museum so somewhere that's taking that stuff. I don't know if it's a museum. I know there's a store that like has a shit ton of stuff that's kind of like a museum in New York that I've been to. Yeah. Um, it's strange. But I mean, there there are certain places. Some colleges had like some funding to like archive that stuff, but then like it got fucked up and then the program got defunded and stuff. And I was like, well, just back to some amateurs, you know, just backing up what they can. And yep. I think as time goes on. This is a part of our culture, like these these games. I mean, I grew up playing this, and this has shaped how I think of game design. Just you know, in the future. Yeah. Right. And these things should be preserved. And I'm glad that they're doing it to games like this. But there are yeah. other games that not that many people played. That are, that I that are just are... completely disappearing to the sands of time. Yeah, it sucks, and it's like. I would say pretty much every game is valuable on, on some sort of level. It's Even like the weird time. shovelware stuff for like the, the PS2 and stuff. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, it's party games. Because it's like, it's still part of the history of that you system and all that. Mr. It's like, guy. What? Like, there's so many movies that are just gone forever now, especially from like when the movie industry first so started. Good. Just because it's like, ah, eh, whatever, it's disposable. Hey, Professor Gascan wants to see the original. Show, show him the original artwork. Oh, yeah, yeah. Touch of a button, boom, boom there you boom. go and play original version for a while. Go ahead. Um, but yes, yeah, you know, there's so many like movies and like even TV shows from like the 50s and stuff like, uh, 
Well, well if, it's shot the, on, if it's shot on film, yeah. then it's easy to it's archive sh- that easier. stuff. There's, there's uh, the one, stuff on videotape. Like that stuff yeah. needs to be all archived, like right yeah. now. One of the longest running TV shows, Doctor Who, has like a ton of episodes that are gone forever because they're probably on videotape. Like they're on video. Tape. Yeah, they're on videotape, and like people at the BBC just rec- re-recorded over the tapes. <laughs> And like apparently, like uh, some of the original footage of the moon landing when it was being broadcast almost got recorded over too. And somebody found the tape. Was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, Jesus. What? That's <laughs> don't do that. That's American history, just like this game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so fun, just like changing history in this game because it, it makes you feel so good when you like complete those puzzles and now you're walking around with a tentacle yeah. disguise. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of that you know that feel you had in Portal. When you played that, and you yes, had that aha yes. moment. Totally. Like this is one thing. of the first games that did that, right? This game is just full of those yep. moments. Yeah. This looks like it hasn't changed at all from from <laughs> from the from the the other stage. Hmm, <laughs> it's empty. It's a storage cabinet. <laughs> They're freaking out right now. I was like, nobody cares about the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so over the moon. We went there a couple times. You know, what's on the moon? Rocks. I can get rocks here. <laughs> True. It's really busted Whoa. up. Whoa, okay. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> uh, it's all right, it's all right. All right, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> So we were talking about, what, the moon and Doctor Who? And yeah, Doctor Who, you know, he went to the moon one time, probably. Uh, that's where he played Day of the Tentacle. He was like, wow. You thought it was game. the greatest game of all time? I should just stop being the doctor and start playing all these video games. I am immortal, after all, or something like that. I could probably just sit around and play every video game ever. <laughs> that's something I wish I could do. I remember doing that back at university, just being like, I'm gonna play every Super Nintendo game ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get, you get every single Super Nintendo game you can find, it's just like, I'm gonna play them alphabetically, and then by the time you get to Balls 3D, you're like, fuck! <laughs> that's, that's around the time when you realize that like a large majority, especially back then, of, of games that came out weren't great. And it's just like, when you remember the Super Nintendo being really good, you're remembering, like, about... It's still, like, I well, actually... Well, it's because it's I Nintendo. Lo- yeah. Nintendo had is an amazing software development Like, I team. looked, th- I actually looked through a list earlier. It's like, how many good games on the SNES are there? And I, for me, personally, it's around, like, 70, which is still a lot. But 70 games? Like, around, that's, like, that's 60 or 70. It's a lot. That's a but, lot of games, yeah. Like, when you look at the full, like, American release list, it's, like, 680 okay. games. This is exactly I mean, it's still, like, 10% of all the games being, like, really good. I'll bury it tonight like, and eat that's, that's still counting good, exclusives and games that you can find on other platforms too. But like, in your debt. you know, but still, like having Whoa. sixty games on on. Well, I guess how long was Super Nintendo around? Eighty nine to when the last no, time, like ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah, ninety six. Ninety six. Because there were a couple of games that released really late, like Super Mario RPG and Yoshi's Island. That was like mm-hmm. ninety five or ninety six. And those games are absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, those games are like some of the fucking best things out there. Super Mario RPG is so good. So Square expensive. Game. There weren't that many carts of it made because it was the yeah. end of the system's lifespan, yeah. right? I have a cart and I'm never I'm, letting it go. I'm kind of surprised. How much did that, you pay for it? Fifty bucks. That's it? Yeah. Wow. It's because I bought it when I was first getting to college, and like that was you know like eight years ago now or something like that. And uh, Super Nintendo games hadn't inflated in price yet, so I got Final Fantasy three in the box with the manual for thirty bucks. What? That is insane. I got what? thirty bucks. And now it's like 120. And now I'm like, well, I should have bought Mega Man X2 and 3 back then because they were like $80 instead of 500. You need the can opener. Yeah. I feel like it's a little easier to switch with the old menu because it's like it's up all the time. Yeah. All right, Ozo, your days are numbered. <laughs> That's what you get for hitting me. I don't know if we should end the stream. It's five thirty, but we could just keep on talking about, talking about yeah, like old like old games that need to be preserved. Yeah, yeah. Every game that needs an HD remaster. All right, let's go right let's, now. Let's, let's just, do let's it. just one like, at a time. One at a time. One uh, uh, needs HD remaster. Chrono Trigger. Yep. Chrono Trigger. I was gonna say Final Fantasy VII, but it's already happening. It's it's yeah. It's getting remade, and they'll scream again when they show a trailer or something. Uh, man, what's something I want HD? re-release or remake for that hasn't already happened. I feel like most of the, the ones have already happened for me. 
But like, if there was something for like Super Mario RPG, I would totally get that. Yeah, that seems like it'd be good. Yeah. Man, are, like, are we just gonna name all these big ass RPGs that were released <laughs> in the nineties? It's like, yeah, but but give us like realistic. Unreal 4 shaders. I gotta see Mario <laughs> Unreal Engine 4. He's gonna have really highly detailed overalls and dynamic light. He's gonna have a flashlight in a cave and it's gonna look great. And he's gonna have a backstory, a gritty backstory. Don't, we, don't forget the poop shader. <laughs> yeah. The poop shader. Don't forget it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super Metroid. Mike Watson. He wants an Ape Escape HD. I totally... Yeah, I would, I would yeah. totally play There that. just needs to be a new Ape Escape. I don't know, does Super Metroid really need to be remade? I mean, like, I mean, when they did that GBA Zero Mission, which I know it's not a remake, but it's like, I mean, none, it none kind of, of is. Like, none of Super Metroid is in that. Like, I mean, in both those games do very similar things. But I don't feel like Super Metroid needs to be remade no because it's still, like, it still stands up really good on its own. Because people yeah. are making games like that now. There's something about that art style yeah. and that the atmosphere that they did. If anything, it's just like, okay, well, re release it on new consoles, which they have. So. Yeah. I mean, you can still buy it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the only thing, there's a couple things you could do with Super Metroid to make it just slightly better, and that is, there's like two areas that's really hard to figure out what you're supposed to do, and you can make that a little bit easier, you can, and it's basically controls, like the GBA ones, they just took Super Metroid's controls and refined them a little bit more. Are you talking about wall jumping, you scrub? <laughs> I can do the wall jumping, Yeah, exactly, fine. wall jumping's fine. But I know, but it's better in the, in the GBA ones. What? Uh, no, it's good when you're a couple pixels off because you never accidentally do it, and then when you learn how to do it, there's an aha moment. Yeah. yeah. And if it's like I so don't... easy to do, and you, you know, and you see the animation, you jump. Like, oh, I can wall jump. Like mm -hmm. most players will figure that out right away. Mm -hmm. You never figure it out because of how how they made it kind of difficult. And then once you learn the timing, you're like wall jumping all over the place. You feel like you're a fucking ninja. That's true. When you learn how to do it, you do feel pretty good about it. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I would like an official release of the sequel to Secret of Mana. Yeah! The US release. Yeah, yeah like US. that never came out. Yeah, that never came out. Uh, it came out in Europe and not here, but Terra Enigma yep. for the Super Nintendo I mean, is also I pretty good. I, I haven't played myself, but. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Full, full throttle. <laughs> full throttle. <laughs> yeah, but it's throttle coming, like but it's coming. That's the rolling. thing. Like, all these games that I want remade <laughs> I'm, are I'm coming. I'm totally yeah. going to replay Full Throttle, too, when that. Fuck yeah, I'm going to replay Full Throttle. They actually did announce that, right? We're, I'm just yeah, they not announced, No, they announced it. it. Oh, they yeah, they said, yeah, by the way, it was all text, but it was like, yeah, that's, oh, hey, by this the is way. Happening. That's why I thought. I just didn't want to say, like, hey, Full Throttle, and it's like, wait, no, they never said that. I was pretty sure they did, though, but. They're talking about Donkey Kong Country, but, like, I don't know if, like, Donkey Kong Country could be redone, like, fully Unreal, like, fully 3D, and it probably would look pretty good. I mean, yeah. you could just, like, redo it in the Tropical Freeze engine or whatever, yeah. and it would look fine. Could, yeah. Frostbite? <laughs> <laughs> yep, remake Donkey Kong Country and Frostbite. I don't know. I feel like the Unreal stuff would be just as good. I feel like Unreal and Frostbite are, are similar. They just have... You know, one's like an FPS engine with levels, and the other one's more of an open world streaming yeah. type of thing. Mm. But they have similar graphic capabilities. It's just, you know, where do the artists spend that? Where do they decide that they want to put all that? Yeah. They're saying Panzer Dragoon. I say Panzer Dra Dragoon Saga because yep. nobody got yeah, to play that nobody game. Nobody got to play that damn game. I have an exactly. open copy. That thing's worth like 400 bucks. You know that, right? I know. What are you doing? <laughs> Put it in a safety deposit box. Get it out of your house, dude. That's my children's college fund. <laughs> <laughs> Konami remakes all the Metal Gears in Fox Engine with Keith Sutherland and No Kojima. Uh, Christine I... draws. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it could happen. It could happen. Mm. The Manny's asking us if we did the DK rap and upload it to YouTube. Uh, d d DK. We did do that one day. I was like, guess what? We're going to listen to one <laughs> oh, song yeah. and one song only. <laughs> yeah, and then we listened to DK rap. rap. I, was like, I was like, I was trying to haze you like this, the first week you were here. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is what fucking happens at Volition when you hire somebody. Like, hey, let's listen to this. DK. And, and it's just really Donkey loud. Donkey Kong. DK. <laughs> Donkey <laughs> Kong is you. Oh shit, I should Okay, so I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys know about this, but there's this YouTube there's, so there's this YouTube account like that just way. uploads wow. basically game soundtracks. It's called like Gilva Sunner or something. Uh huh. And some dude made a new account that's called Gilva Sunner, but it's like a uppercase I instead of an L, but it looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And it's just like these you don't know it because it, it 
It's just the name of whatever game soundtrack he's uploading. But every single one is a fucking remix. And like 50% of them is just taking whatever instruments, MIDI instruments were used for the game song and just making the fucking Flintstones theme. <laughs> so it'll just be, it'll be like the first 10 seconds of like the first, of like the, uh, uh, the first level of Mario 60, sorry, Mario 64. <laughs> so, you know, it'll just do the first opening jingle, and it's ba 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 And it's, it's like Mario, Zelda, like a whole bunch of games, and it's just like... And then there's like a Metal Gear song. It, was, it wasn't Snake Eater, it was Sins of the Father for MGS5, and it was just like a Gangnam style mashup. Oh, oh God. God. Apparently, <laughs> apparently Reboot231 says he's been listening to the same thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one on this, okay. It's like, okay, this does exist. He's not just, like, making some shit up here. <laughs> oh, I need that cigar lighter. How long was this game, would you say? First time playthrough. Um, well, it depends on how quickly you can solve the puzzles. Yeah. And if you want to do, like, every single conversation option. Like, right. I, yeah. I like doing well, that. I think the conversation yeah, options are well worth doing. Like, yeah, you, should, I would you totally, should do them the first playthrough. Yeah, I would totally do every single one. But, like... Just a rough estimate. Like if I was trying to see everything, I think it's like about ten hours long okay. for you to to solve everything Do on your everything. own. Everything, okay. yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Who are you? I would say that if you've played it before, it's probably about a five-hour game. At least that's what people online are saying too. Okay, so that doesn't seem too ridiculous. I guess you can speed run in eighteen minutes. Yeah, like do a crit path playthrough, but like that's that's holding escape, like the whole thing. Okay, uh -oh. yeah. Oh, Hydus PG what? says they want to do Tron Bond. Uh, yeah, and adventures. a remake of that would be really good. I'm replaying Tron. Bond yeah, right I just now. I was watching plays like, man, this would be really good. Like yeah, art style I, wise, I don't even need to really change that it's, much. It got like not even a year ago, like last summer, they Sony or Capcom re-released it on the PlayStation Network, so you can get it for like six bucks now. But that's a really hard game to get because of the controls. No big, or, no because no. the I mean they it's just like it's that's Sony's virtual console right. thing. Okay, but the they re-released it there so that you can just download and play on your PS3, and it's like six bucks. I bought it before that happened, and like that game's really hard to get, like an actual copy. Well, of. Well, yeah, they didn't make very many. Units they made of very it, really. yeah. So I got lucky and got it for eighty dollars, but good luck finding it for less than like two hundred. <laughs> when I bought it, I got it from eBay, and it was just like in one of those plastic or uh, those paper CD sleeves yeah, yeah. with no case, and it was all scratched up. I was like, oh no! And I had to take it to like a family video and get buffed like three times in a row before it would work. Yeah, Glorp is saying a Mega Man Legends remake with a control scheme that actually works yeah. would be amazing. I agree with that. That, that game was really good. Mega Man Legends 1 and 2, really good. It's a shame what happened to 3, but it looked cool. <laughs> yeah, it did. It looked pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, I would be up for a remake of a Legends game. Mega Man Legends spinoff. Now they're all talking about how they got their copy of Mega Man Legends. Man, there's a lot of Mega Man Legends fans here. I feel like we should play that next, if that's the case. I love Mega Man Legends, man. You can play Tron Bon. Yeah. Well, shit, maybe I would. Maybe, yeah, maybe we should play Tron Bon yeah. on stream. I didn't think that there'd be a lot of people that would know about it just because it, not very many people played it. Yeah. I'm rather... Hey, aren't you Bernard Bernoulli? You no, my name is Three Foot. No, oh, you missed a good joke! No. I'm sorry. Yeah, You're just clicking one. through all the good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what makes this game, like, really fun for people, because there's three jokes, or like right for a lot, right. like a lot of lines. There's multiple yeah. jokes, yeah. And like you're always gonna think the game is funny because you pick the you ones pick the that one you think you like that, the most, yeah, yeah. That you think it's the funniest. And then when you hear it, like that's the I'm payoff. Yeah, yeah. I've come to fix your VCR. That's what I. That's what I love about like like about games versus movies because in a game you get to choose, especially if it's a narrative heavy game like something like this, you get to pick it. And like yeah. you never, you never are like, man, the story sucks. Even though you end up at the end, versus if you were just to watch it, and be like, I would have never done that. I would have never <laughs> went through there. Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have done this when I went through time. And it's like because you have that disconnect when you're watching a movie. Like right. people are always upset with movies. Yeah. But but like if it's a, if it's interactive narrative like a game like this, and you always get to yeah, pick, yeah. like you do it. I mean, everybody loves the story. Nobody plays through this whole thing. It's like, yeah, it was a good adventure game, but the story sucks. Good adventure game, but there are a lot of plot holes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> If you really think about it, there are a lot of inaccuracies in how time travel would work. You would have caused so many different, uh, uh, time paradoxes. Time paradoxes. Yeah. 
I'll let you get well, back to you what really you're doing. If you really think about it, this game makes literally no sense. Come back. <laughs> Check in, mate, Tim Schafer. <laughs> <laughs> the paradox effect would totally mean. <laughs> oh, you gotta change the statue in the past yep. with the left handed hammer. Ah. Gotta go get the left handed hammer. It's in, uh, it's in the past. Yep. So when you wanna go to the. Oh, right, because they're all in different time periods, okay. Yeah, so even though you're in the same mansion, What's what's interesting about the, the one of the design choices that they made here mm -hmm. is that you would think on the surface it's like okay the angle needs to be the exact same for every room, otherwise you'll get confused about where you are. Right. And like that is not the case in in this game. Get away from You gotta bump the bed first, dude. It's a good thing I finished the bed, bro. Yeah, you gotta bump the bed. Bump that bed. So make the bed. Yeah. Because you gotta. Like she's also like partially blind, I think, which is why <laughs> she thinks you're one of the founding fathers. Well, that's one of the other fun parts about this, though, is even if you know what to do, like playing through and going, well, let's see what happens if I don't immediately do it, because you right. get extra VO, you get extra lines. Yeah, and... it's. Well, most kind players, of when they go through way. it the first time, will also do that, right? Yeah. Like, I remember just going through as, as a kid, just like, oh man, how do I do this? Maybe if I do it this way, maybe if I do it this way. And, but like now that I've played through this game like six or seven times, I'll, I'll, I mean, I was flying through it last night, so. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! I saved it. Okay. We're good. Whoa. Good. <laughs> now go in there and just be like, I heard, I heard you lost your soap. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you can't, you can't talk to her. Oh. I wonder where your soap went. I guess we'll never know. There's no water. Oh, we gotta go get the water. Mouth Chew is saying, I've played this through so many times, but only just learned you can use items in your inventory with characters to insta send it to them. Oh, uh, yeah. You learn, <laughs> something, you learn something new. You learn things. I saw some other people tweeting yesterday, like, is there a way to do this other than going back to time machine every time? It's like, you just drag and they're like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> been, there, been there for a feature for over 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> that was what, what surprised me. I thought that would be a thing that's like, oh, that got added in later. It's like no, a, a convenience no, thing. No, like, no, they that, thought of that. Yeah. And also the fact that this game was made in, in a year and then six months extra for talkie. Yeah, it's nuts. For polish. Like, that seems insane to me in. now. But like, yeah. I mean, back then, eight to 12 months for a game cycle was not unheard of. Yeah. Games were a lot simpler back then too. So you didn't have to spend a whole lot of time making art and stuff. I mean, now game development cycles, That I mean, that was like one thing that we actually talked about when they're like, okay, uh, there's new PlayStation and new Xbox coming. Mm -hmm. Now we've got all this RAM and now it's like, oh shit. Cause game <laughs> development cycles are like now ballooning. Like on average, yeah. on average, most studios are twenty four really? to thirty six months to you know take a game from okay, what are we doing to okay, it's on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. Like now, add another two years to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the really big stuff, to, like uh, you know, Phantom Pain. That game was like five years. They were working so. on Phantom Pain for five years. I think I think it was it might have been even close to six because you know they they made that whole Fox Engine thing too. So that was yep. even more time in, in development for that game. Yep. I forget how to do this. I know what I need to do. You swap the mattresses. Right. Where am I gonna put it? Yeah, right there. It says use it and then use it with the other bed. Yeah, do it the old way, the verb way. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's push Ned's bed to some, to the other one or something. Oh, there it is. Ah, uh, okay. Am Where am I gonna put it? And then... You have to actually select the mattress. Yeah. There uh, we go. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 Titus PG says Final Fantasy 15's been a decade in the making. Well, if that, you consider versus, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's Ooh. definitely an exception. But yeah, Final Fantasy 15 has taken essentially ten years. Bitcha. Although it seems there were large periods of time where essentially development just stopped for it. That's kind of what it seems like. Yeah, maybe. And then they're like, okay, 
Let's just make this 15. We've been it's been in the oven for so long. <laughs> make, make, just make it the big new thing. They're announcing the release date for that next week. Really? They're having like a big event next Wednesday to like yep. show off it's, the game. It's a pre E3 thing. Yeah. When's E3 again? How many? Uh, June 14th. All right. Wow. I think. Yeah. Wow. They're going. They're going at it early. Did you see that? Uh, they must be launching today. They actually said uh, the story is 50 hours. Yeah, 50 hours, and they were wait 50 about, hour crit path. Yes. Yeah. What? There must be a ton of grinding. There must be 20 hours of grinding. <laughs> <laughs> like, how is there good? Of, that's insane. That, 50 that, hours of story? Witcher 3 for me has been like 100. N- n- no. Well, not Crit, crit Path for, story. Crit path. crit path for Witcher 3 would be it's like, like 20 hours. Yeah, 20 hours. And there's probably hours some grindy stuff in between there too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's eventually in, in that point, you'll reach a point in that game. It's like, I feel like I should have better swords and armor than I do. And that's where you'll just kind of naturally start, like, grinding and doing some other stuff, getting money. Oh, okay. my God, this animation for him getting out of the chimney's great. <laughs> so good. Yeah. It's one of those pulley oh, those pulley things. Only we have can, a rubber chicken. Yeah, but as, is, can you put a rubber chicken on it? Mm, no, there's no so rubber chicken in this game. I don't think... Monkey Island 1... I'm not sure they even knew that, like, all the things that they were making in these games yeah, yeah. are even going to be a thing considering how fast they get made. Yeah. You know? The... Was Monkey Island 2 before this? Um... Uh... <laughs> I'm actually curious. To the cloud! <laughs> I'm actually curious when this uh, came out in... with the other games. So people that do have the original... Well... Monkey Island, Dan Tentacle, you remember the copy protection that came with them, right? Yeah, there was a manual, yeah, that, and you right. had to flip through and yeah. get the two symbols. So yeah, for, for this one, it had the two symbols in the manual. For Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2, you got these dials. And, yeah, uh, so the, I was... Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, the, the first one Monkey Island 2 was, was way before this. It's ni- December 1991. 91? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Two years. And this game came out in 93. Okay. Yeah. So, like, Monkey Island 1, you had to, like, match up the pirate with the uh, right word, and you got, like, the correct date that you had to put in. And then, um, okay. let's turn off. Are you going to take over? You yeah, go. I'm take over for a little bit. Um, the second one, you actually had to, like, uh, make voodoo potions. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because the, um, I was going through, we have, like, a ton of old games here, and I was... There's like a bunch of cleanup and reorganization happening in the offices here, so it's like, well, I guess my office is going to be the old what game storage now. <laughs> uh, and like, well, I was going. You got through, tons of old games in your room. Yeah, I have like 200 old games stacked up on my shelves now, and like the huge boxes PC games came yeah. in too. Uh, but there's um, the game wasn't there, but there was the copy protection dial for like a baseball game so it was like i feel a, like we should pull out one of those old games and be like copy protection yeah. guys and, and it was so it was like a baseball dial <laughs> with the the stitching on it and he had to like turn it to line up the stitching and stuff get these different numbers it was amazing i don't know if i should play through this whole game here with people watching because it's like <laughs> a lot of the joy of this game is it's actually playing the yeah game. it's actually yeah. like playing with the dialogue and stuff like right now we're not playing with the dialogue it's like okay yeah the man is asking if i'm a hoarder no i'm a historian that's how i contextualize Big difference. yeah that's how yeah. i sleep at night <laughs> and not feel bad about it look i don't even have a mattress anymore i sleep on top of the game boxes and it feels great use mist for a pillow yeah you know there's so many fucking copies of mist like that is totally there are three okay. copies of mist in the office yeah there's three copies here <laughs> In the box. And it's everything. like all three of them have like the same stuff written in the manuals of like all the different puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's how you solve this uh-huh. puzzle. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> Oh, where hath gone the muse that once guided my head? <laughs> I, I just love the little Most squeaky noises for his, his hammer. Yeah. Must art be so cruel? I'm a failure. Don't say that, Ned. Father was right. We Edisons are made to be scientists, not artists.
Dear brother, we must be strong in these times of creative adversity. <laughs> Well, now we can go be mean to old ladies. Yep. Yeah. Although probably, probably the best line yeah. in the game. Although it is almost six o'clock. <laughs> it's okay. We'll we'll do this and right. we'll wrap it up. I'm glad we switched places. I think you're coming out quite well. Can't believe he was a playable, almost a playable character. I, That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I never. Was that, that. was that a known thing? I don't. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Again, I, I what I said last I mean, stream. I mean, T Shapes comes in here and yeah. drops a bomb on when us. I, like, okay. <laughs> what I said last stream, and I feel like I still need. We need to get a soundboard here so we can do a world exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> All right, so now we can push her, do it. and she won't be able to hang on to the uh, to the hand of the sword. And cue the line. Well, you know what they say. If you want to save the world, you gotta push a few old ladies down the stairs. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> and I think with that, that yeah. is a good place to end this. Uh, yeah, so if you're still sticking with us, uh, we're Volition. We stream every Thursday at 5 Eastern, four, uh, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, 21 GMT now. Those time zones fuck me up so much. Yeah. Fuck time zones. And daylight savings. Saving I just time. wanted I just want daylight savings to be all year round so it doesn't get dark at four PM because that makes me feel horrible. Yeah. Uh, well it's good now. It's great now. Yeah, it's right great, now it's, it's great fine. now. Yeah, it's perfect. Just have it like Yeah, this we're just gonna go home, it's gonna be dark because it's six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. we stream every week. Uh, probably be doing something goofy next week. You'll see. Uh, again I Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, do tell. No, actually, no. Don't it, tell us because it's, it's in flux still too. We gotta, no, no. You got a got a solid plan. Gonna I'm move bringing forward. lots of swords into the office. Oh no, shit! Uh, what? <laughs> I did buy a lot of swords uh, over the weekend though. 120 dollars of swords. They promised me they can smash concrete, and I'm gonna put that to the test. <laughs> in the office? Don't. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, man. No, no. no. Uh, I'm Josh Stinson. I'm the stream czar. I'm uh, Alexander Mejia, video producer. I'm Ryan McCabe, senior designer. Uh, and we also had, for the first hour of the stream, uh, the lovely people from Double Fine, Tim Schaefer, and everybody else. And mm -hmm. thanks for having them be on and giving us all the sweet codes. And yeah. yeah. Don't forget to fill out the survey. It's on the bottom. Yep. Uh, we just need It's not even a survey. Just you put your email just in there. Just email. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. And then and, you can uh, enter it into the drawing. Yeah. And we also had our community manager, Mike Watson, Mari in the chat. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Oh, uh, we also have um, coming up soon Pi Day, which that's is Monday. Monday. Yes. yes, this coming Monday we'll be streaming again. Uh, we'll be tweeting the times and all that. Uh, we'll be streaming our yearly Pi Day event, which is the real Pi Day. Separate from that dumb Pi Day, we we have our own thing where we eat every, pies. We eat pies yeah. live on stream. Yep, you yeah. eat an entire pie over the course of a day mm -hmm. because we want to enjoy pie. Simple. Yeah. And it's other game devs get in on this too, I think. Yeah. Was it, was it Volition that started the Yeah, Pi Day Volition thing? started. Yeah. We started the Pi Day. Yeah, we yeah. started Pi Day. Some other developers also stream their Pi Day. Yeah. So. You'll learn more about it on Monday. Yeah. yeah. So the Tune show, in. Yeah, the show's not over. We're going <laughs> to keep going. So. Yeah. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next week. All right. Bye, Later, guys. Bye.